Um, I want to read a uh, three or four line call of worship that's before the regular call of worship. Uh, but I want you to remember it because I'm going to bring it back up as I close the worship service out. So the four liner goes like this. Good morning. It's wonderful to have you here. Listen for the possibilities, but don't mistake this experience for the whole thing. Got some time to think about that now. We are Peach Blow United Methodist Church, located in Lewis Center, Ohio. We are a small but now growing church committed to share the good news of what we believe about Christ. Come, let us worship. Let us worship with our minds and our hearts. Let us worship in spirit as God calls us to be the children of God. We're going to have a few moments of silent prayer, and then I'm going to have a, a, a prayer for, uh, for us to begin worship service. So let us be in prayer. Lord God, we are aware of the presence of others around us in worship, both in Zoom and here in the building. They are visible. But what about you, Lord? Sometimes we wonder, can, can we count on you being here? We know your promise that where two or three are gathered in your name, that you are here in our midst. How are you in our midst? How does your presence turn us from being a collection of people, Lord, to being the body of Christ? We often become more concerned with counting our heads than counting your presence. Maybe that's why we don't always see you. Can you turn us from being a group of uh, onlookers into the body of worshipers? And what about you? Do you in the midst of this morning see us alert and awake? We pray that you will help us feel not only your presence, but to hear your spirit. We remember you on the cross. In the midst of that picture of the two thieves, one rebuked you and the other one repented. Is that what happens when we are in your midst here or on Zoom? We have responded to you in so many days, so many years, Lord, we do not want to take you for granted. We remember the time that you came and stood in the midst of the disciples, putting to an end of their doubts, the doubts of Thomas. Come now today on this August day into our midst and end our doubts. Then, Lord, help us to take your presence into the world in which each of us live, remembering that you are in the midst of so many. Lord, we pray that we all may respond. In the name of Jesus Christ, we begin our worship service today. Amen. Um, our scripture lesson today is um, one that some of you will remember. Uh, it's from Hebrews. Of course, in the New Testament, the 10th chapter and verses, um, let's see, I'm going to begin with probably 19 and go down to 25. Um, a little above it's talking about worship itself. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way which he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in the full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. 
let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. That's an old, old scripture lesson and uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about it um, today. The key verse that I want to work with is, um, let us not give up the habit of meeting together. Obviously I'm suggesting worship uh, as some are doing, but instead let us encourage one another. Now the writer of Hebrews says that this scripture lesson is an extremely important one, or at least he implies it. Worship, he says, is absolutely essential to the vitality uh, of a congregation and the journey of what we call, commonly call discipleship. It is an emerging center. It is the centerpiece of the banquet table of what we call the Christian experience. With the pandemic, we cannot simply assume that things are always going to be the way they used to be in a worship service. Things have changed. Will they change more? Will they go back? I don't have the slightest idea. The quiet, steady erosion of key disciplines in our lives uh, during this time of uh, pandemic is a concern I have for the church as well as a lot of other things that are going on in the world. Is worship a legalistic requirement? I used to think so, uh, frankly, as a child going to Sunday school, and even as a young adult, as a young minister, I read the fourth commandment as a thundering rule of Almighty God. Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. I used to remember if I wanted to play a little basketball or softball on Sunday, I'd sneak out the back door and put all the stuff in the car so nobody could see me walking to the playground. I now believe that worship is in the category of a gracious imperative. It is part of a discipleship under grace. It is an encouraging act of faithfulness by a gracious God. Someone said recently, worship is not a legalistic requirement of an angry God, but a loving desire of a loving God who just wants to spend some quality time with us. I love that. So why do we worship? What value does it have? I suppose you've heard some of the stats going on about all the accidents that we have in our country today. 20% of the accidents, yep, they're in our cars. 17% <clears throat> happen in our homes. 16% while we're walking or while we're running. 15% happen in other ways of traveling other than an automobile. But my commercial this morning is only 0 0.001 accidents happens in church. So this is the safest place for you to be on Sunday. And that's true. I didn't make those numbers up. That's out of a... Surely <clears throat> there are better reasons for worshiping Joel. And I'd like to quickly tell you two of them. First... Worship helps us connect with Almighty God. Herb Miller was a guy who used to write, oh, 15, 20 years ago, lots of books on, on the institution of the church. He has a fine book where he says, churches do many things, but their main thing is helping people to connect with God. Worship is the primary way People worship and accomplish the main thing. Someone 
said and I read, and I hope I got this right, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. You've heard that before. It is that way with worship being a connecting element in our spiritual life. Worship is a, a matter of connecting to the dial tone. We don't talk about dial tone much anymore. The dial tone of God's presence. Worship is like plugging in a power tool uh, to do an electric source, to an electric source. Such connection does not guarantee that the tool will be used well, but it's still connected. A children's Sunday school class was asked one day, so why do people really go to church? The fourth grade class boy answered, my grandparents go to church every Sunday because they have known God longer than we have. Worship connects us with the Almighty on a consistent, continuing basis. We deeply need to be connected. I recently saw a cartoon. It was a stereotype of uh, the psychiatrist's office. A woman was uh, lying on a, on a couch. And, uh, the doctor, the psychiatrist, had a full, full beard and a, a, a notebook in his hand. The woman was saying, Doctor, I keep trying to get in touch with my deepest self. But all I get is her answering machine. A friend of mine tells the story, another pastor, in other words, that I know. I, it's a story that goes back of a busy attorney who was racing through Chicago's uh, O'Hara uh, Airport. And it was on a Friday afternoon, not much different than Columbus on a Friday afternoon. The crowds were maddening, he described. He was trying his best to go from one plane to another plane, getting to the gate for the connecting flight. In the process, he came into a large crowd where there were lots of children running around, all dressed in similar t-shirts. He learned later that they were from Chicago's largest children's home. As he threaded his way through the children's area, he suddenly felt an arm around the bottom of his leg. He looked down to see a handsome little blonde boy, about six, staring up at him. And he, the little boy asked him, who do you belong to, mister? The child was asking, who do you belong to? The question also raised to the attorney a very deep feeling within him. He later reported the question ultimately became a kind of life impact question while he was thinking on the airplane. To whom do I belong, he thought. To my profession, to my investments, um, to my clients, or to the God who has made me and created me and guides me. Worship connects us and connects each of us with Almighty God. It is the strength and the power of our living. It is a regular need each of us has. I used to balk when someone would say, well, you know, a church is like a filling station. And the image of someone going there and getting their tank full, I don't know, it used to really bug me, but it doesn't anymore. In fact, it seems to make a lot of sense to me that we do come together as a community to feel our spirits lifted and to fill us literally with hope. Um, up at the cottage, I listened to a radio station uh, from Mansfield, Ohio. Sounds like the end of the earth, but Mansfield is not that far away. And they now have a new format as of last week. It's called um, Bright and Easy bright and easy. Uh, most of us wish that life was like that, don't we? Bright and easy. But we know it's not. 
Worship connects us with the power that we need in times, not only a bright and easy, but when things become difficult. Someone else has powerfully written, how special are the Lord's faithful people? My greatest pleasure and one of my greatest pleasures is to come and see you on Sunday morning. Now, I'm in and out of here a lot, and I don't tell you that for any reason. I just, Paycoff's probably see me go back and forth, wonder what in the world does he do there every day? But I go back and forth, and I look forward to Sunday morning and seeing you folks. Worship is a connecting event. Therefore, let us not give up the habit of worshiping together. And finally, this quick point. Worship points us to greater possibilities in our lives. As such, worship is a kind of a, it's a preliminary event. Let's put it that way. It's an overture of a larger picture. It's a, it's a hint of what life can be for us. Worship is not the totality. Worship is part of the experience. Now, Sunday morning, this Sunday morning, I said, remember now the call to worship. And I'm going to read it to you again. Good morning. It's wonderful to have you here. Listen for the possibilities. But don't, don't mistake this experience for the whole thing. Worship is our energizing center but it is not the equivalent of total discipleship because of worship we should want to know more worship says there are boundless possibilities of life in christ hopefully on sunday you will be challenged listen to them make the connections then move on as you move to your home and your various places Worship opens up the possibilities of the kingdom of God. I close with this. For the last 17 or 18 months, I've been frustrated. I've been frustrated related to trying to do some things with the church. Our congregation in the last several years has changed about the makeup, about 75%. And we need to change our, 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 some of our leadership. They're not even here anymore. So I'm trying to put together now some new leadership, some new ways so that I'm not driving up and down the street every day, gang. Okay? So you're going to hear from me. I, When I call you, you're going to go, uh-oh, this is Joel calling. He's calling to ask me to do something. And that's probably going to be correct. So I'm going to be in the next five or six weeks putting together a whole different structure of this church, a whole different. I'm tired of waiting for every Sunday that we're going to be here for eternity. You know, we we had to drop the last couple of weeks, but we're going. We need to do that before fall begins. Let us then not give up the habit of coming each Sunday and worshiping together, but let us also remember in life's journey of spiritual faith we need to connect not only with god and with each other and i need lots of leaders at peach blow amen lord of all power and might of sunny days and rainy days we thank you for the past week we need your strength in the week to come bless us we thank you for a congregation that has gathered it by Zoom and in person. May this time of reflection that we've had together give us an opportunity that we may live out the peace and the power in Jesus' name. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.